year-old girl in her front yard in Lumberton, North Carolina, when a man forced her into her family's SUV and drove off. Police issued an Amber Alert, and for weeks, a community pleaded for answers. What happened to Hanya Aguilar? Finally, they made a gruesome discovery and then an arrest. But this story is far from over. Reporter Mark Becker takes us through the quest to find justice for Hanya. Perched on the edge of North Carolina's coastal plains, Lumberton has the soul of a small town and the feel of an old friend. But just beneath the surface, this community lives with a troubling reality. It's in a county with the highest violent crime rate in North Carolina. And fear is a shadow never far off. So when 13-year-old Hanya Aguilar disappeared outside her home early on the morning of November 5th, 2018, this community collectively held its breath. First, you know, you don't, you don't know, maybe it was some disgruntled, you know, family member, and it's just gonna be a little fleeting passing thing. And Jerome Chavis was born no, and raised good. in Lumberton, and early on, he could sense that something was race. terribly wrong. Yep. Within hours, Lumberton police issued an Amber Alert and called in the FBI. The next day, Hanya's mother made a public plea for her return. I think it's a big story from the beginning. I mean, you had a, the, I mean, the very first thing we heard, 13-year-old girl snatched trying to go to school. Donnie Douglas is the longtime editor of the local newspaper here, The Robinsonian. You got a sense fairly early on that something bad had happened to her. These things don't ever end good. I mean, they just kind of don't. And still for the next several days, this community tried to hold on to hope. The FBI offered a reward up to $15,000 for information that would help them find Hanya. And they released surveillance video of a stolen SUV seen speeding away moments after Hanya disappeared. They wouldn't have to wait long. The next day, agents found that SUV abandoned in the scrub off a country road. But there was still no sign of Hanya. So they roped the area off and searched for clues that would help them find her. Later that day, another big development. The FBI released surveillance video of a man seen walking near the place where Hanya had disappeared. The first images of a possible suspect in the case. They showed a man dressed in dark clothing, wearing a bandana. The same description witnesses had reported seeing the day she disappeared. It may have been their first look at a killer and they needed the community to put a face and a name to that shadowy figure. But there was still no sign of Hanya, and hope was fading in Lumberton that they would find her alive. Yeah, uh, as time progressed, we figured there wasn't gonna be a good ending. Sadly, uh, we were right. All the while, calls had been coming in to the Lumberton Police Department's tip line. It was one of those calls that finally led them here on November 27th to an area several miles from where Hanya had disappeared. We started specifically targeting the area along Wiregrass Road because of a number of tips uh, that have come into the police department through the tip line. Police and the FBI roped off the area and searched well into the night. The next day they made an announcement that many had expected, but no one wanted to hear. We believe we had found the body of 13-year-old Hanya Aguilar. The body was found in a body of water off the Wiregrass Road in Robinson County about 4.45 p.m. yesterday afternoon. The police chief and FBI's lead agent wrestled with their feel. own emotions as daughter. they faced reporters. Last night, I had to stand in front of Hanya's mother and explain to her what we had found. And you can all imagine what that has done to her. This is the outcome that we all feared that was going to happen. We did not want to hear this. We wanted to bring Hanya back home and bring her back home alive to our community. It hurts. Three weeks of searching and hoping had clearly taken their toll. They vowed their search would continue, but now with a different focus. Our work is not over. We will not stop. We will not stop until we find the person or persons responsible 
and we bring them to justice. We will not stop. This here isn't about us today. This is about an innocent girl. This is about Hanya and her life. And we want to do everything possible to hold the person or persons accountable who committed this horrific offense. And as Hanya's family grieved, the community grieved with them. I just feel sorry for her mother. I couldn't imagine going through something like that. It's heartbreaking. It is, it's heartbreaking. I just can't imagine what that mother's going through with. On December 8th, a month and three days after she disappeared, more than a thousand people gathered in Lumberton for Hanya Aguilar's funeral. It was a bittersweet celebration of a life that had ended much too soon. Every day I am reminded that her life's journey is really about the people who she has touched. The same day that this community said goodbye to Hanya, the FBI announced that police had made an arrest in the case, a suspect they'd been looking at for several weeks, a suspect already in jail here on unrelated charges. Police had identified 34-year-old Michael McClellan as a possible suspect soon after Hanya disappeared. He has family members who live near Hanya's home, and he looks like the shadowy figure walking in that surveillance video. But it was DNA agents found in that stolen SUV that finally gave them what they needed to charge him with Hanna's kidnapping, rape, and murder. DNA that also tied McClellan to a break-in and rape two years earlier in another part of Robeson County. And then another troubling twist. The district attorney revealed that a detective in the Robeson County Sheriff's Office had had that DNA evidence a year earlier and failed to follow up. Many in Robeson County were outraged. He had the evidence to arrest this guy. And had he been arrested, he'd have been in jail. Hanya, would, would, she'd be alive, no question. It, it infuriates me that our tax dollars didn't, that, that we pay, we don't mind paying, didn't protect this child. I understand that people want to go there and they want to point fingers and they want to place blame. But newspaper and, uh, editor uh, Donnie Douglas true. says even if McClellan had been arrested for that rape, in a county with a huge backlog of criminal cases, there's a good chance that he would have been out of jail on bond. So if this guy had been arrested and charged with that rape in Fairmont in 2016, do we know that he wouldn't have done the same thing? We don't know. But yeah, it looks really bad. And through it all, this community is trying to heal. They've collected some, you some money, and they want to bring it to you, and I'll get with you. They've got you some cash. So. Jerome Chavis uh, has formed a special bond with Hanya's family, and a local company has given them a new home. But the hurt is still there where hope had been, and only time can heal that. I think we'll eventually recover. It won't be overnight. It won't be next week, next month, next year. It's going to take some, it's going to take some time. Everybody's hurt. Every, everybody in the county. Everybody's hurt. Michael McClellan has a long criminal history. The DNA that police say connects him to Hanya's murder and the 2016 rape case was collected from the federal database back in 2007 after McClellan was convicted of felony assault with a deadly weapon and first degree burglary. Now he could face the death penalty.